crucified, my Lord. Were you there when they crucified, my Lord? Oh, 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 oh. sometimes it causes me to tremble. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. They then led him away to crucify him. But they kept shouting, Crucify! Crucify him! And Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I command my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. When he learned from the officer that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph brought a line cloth and taking down the body, wrapped it in line cloth and laid it in the tomb that had been cut out of rock. He rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there sitting opposite the tomb. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark. When the Sabbath was over. Oh 
Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Amen and hallelujah. You may be seated. Welcome to worship this morning and happy Easter, everyone. Thank you uh, to our youth for uh, doing our recordings this morning and telling us a little bit more of the story to start us off. Thank you to everyone who has um, helped to make Easter worship get started. Uh, I got to say a special thank you. Uh, I, this wonderful uh, flower arrangement uh, doesn't normally uh, like to be called out, but Paula Wheelock, I wanted to thank you for your ideas and your beautiful arrangements this morning. It's a wonderful way to come in and celebrate. Um, so if you get a chance later, say a thank you to her. And uh, Dixie helped, yes. The two of them don't like to be thanked. So... <laughs> Let's embarrass everyone who doesn't like to be thanked. Hmm. All right. More importantly, oh, it is Easter morning, and I don't know about you, but I opened the door this morning, and I heard birds singing. And <laughs> that felt like an Easter miracle to me. So happy Easter. I think we might actually have spring at some point here soon. It is spring. That is very true. Thank you so much. If you are looking uh, for our uh, order of worship, you can find it in a couple different places. Online, we've always got it there. Some extra details. There is a piece of paper in the hallway with the order of worship, our uh, visual order of worship. If you have the, the red ones, uh, those are the ones for Sunday morning. And then uh, everything will also be on the screens if you want to just follow along in that way. One of the ways that we uh, welcome each other and connect with one another is by signing in and letting each other know we're here. So there are clipboards in the pews. If you want to sign in, pass it down and let others know. Um, you can look and see, oh, I know them. I know their name. Uh, you can pass it down if you have any prayer requests or updates you want to give us. Uh, you can also sign in online. Uh, we have an online uh, check in, it's right underneath the uh, YouTube video, it's also on our Facebook page, especially for anyone who is watching us from home, uh, we welcome you as well, uh, but anyone in the sanctuary is welcome to use that sign in as well. But now, uh, because it is Easter and it is always better to sing together, let's stand again and sing, Christ the Lord is risen today. Christ the Lord is risen today, alleluia. Earth and heaven in chorus say, alleluia. Raise your joys and triumphs high, alleluia. Sing ye hands and earth reply. Oh, 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 o
may be seated. As we come to our, our time of prayer today, we want to lift up and celebrate, and yes, we will celebrate as many times as we can that it is a beautiful day, that it is a day of resurrection and joy. We want to celebrate the wonder of our lives. Many of you have family joining us this morning and have plans for family celebrations, and that is a joy to gather together. We want to remember those who are, uh, are not gathered with family today, who might be struggling, uh, might be lonely, might in some way uh, find Easter a little harder as they can't have who they had normally had with them. So we want to keep each other in our prayers in the midst of that. But let us first turn to God. We're going to start with a silent prayer, and then we'll follow with a pastoral prayer, which just means I talk, and then a, the Lord's Prayer, and we've got, that printed on the, we've got that on the screens if you would like to follow along in the prayer that, uh, or the style that we say, but uh, if you have the Lord's Prayer memorized in a different way, you are welcome to say it however you were raised to say it. So let us turn to God in prayer today. Heavenly and gracious God, it is in your wondrous joy that we come together today. We celebrate the resurrection. We celebrate new life. We celebrate spring. And we celebrate as a gathered community. God, we know that not everyone is feeling joyful today and we ask your presence among them that they may share in the joy felt in this room, that we may share with others as well, just as Christ taught us to pray in his life, in his death, and in his resurrection. He taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now we come to a time in our worship service of passing the peace of Christ. The peace of Christ is an ancient tradition. In the early church, they would kiss each other on the cheeks and We are not going to do that. (laughs) Don't you worry, my love. We shake hands, we wave, we elbow bump, but also we, uh, we say, may the peace of Christ be with you, and we do it in uh, using American Sign Language. So we're going to start with that, and so here's how you do it. May peace of Christ be with you, and this is and also with you. And now I invite you to stand and greet one another in the way that you are most comfortable. And for those of you who are joining us at home, may the peace of Christ be with you in all the ways. I hope you can hear me over our <laughs> excitement in here. It is a joy to gather in worship to you, with you. Happy Easter and welcome to worship today. I'm going to invite our uh, offering helpers, our ushers, to come forward. And I'm actually going to ask for two extra helpers, uh, Peyton and Lydia, you want to help me? All right. So you two pass.
Let us remain standing for our next hymn, Thine Be the Glory. Amen. You may be seated. I now invite the children to come forward. She's actually in charge. You got to. Hey, Alex, can you turn the mic, the handheld mic on? Thank you. Hello. Hello. There you go. It's on. Okay. What's your guys' favorite flower? Banana. Rose. Not a flower. Rose, okay. Anybody else's favorite flower? Orange. Orange flower, okay. Uh, Wait, no, lemon. Banana and grape. Uh, no, flower. Flower. Uh, Daisy. Oh, Daisy? Lemon. Daisies are pretty. Lemon. Lemon. Lemon flowers a thing? Yeah. Okay, I trust you. Yeah. Anybody over here have a favorite? A flower? lily. Lily, perfect. Oh, oh, red roses. Red roses are pretty. What, yes. what do you like? Okay. Okay. Do you like flowers? Anybody know what these white flowers are back here? Uh, Anybody know what they're called? No. Oh, she has one in her hand. Somebody said it. I heard it. Lilies. Lilies. Do we know why we have lilies on Easter? True, true. They represent life. Okay, what does it have to do with Easter? Because Jesus rose from the dead. Yes, perfect. All right. Y'all answered all our questions. What other uh, flowers do you see up here? Chrysanthemums and begonias. 
Why else would we have flowers? What happens around the same time as Easter? It's supposed to be spring, right? Okay. It's supposed to be spring. Right. And what happens in spring? Normal springs, yes. What happens in normal springs? Flowers grow? Yeah. So that is another way that flowers show us new life, right? After all winter, oh, it's been such a long winter. Oh, it's still winter out there, isn't it? Not today. It's very nice. So, and not yesterday, that's right. And so after all of that, we look forward to spring because it feels like something new, right? Yeah. All right, well, that's a lot what, like what Easter is for us. A reminder of something new. Should we pray? Do you think Emma can lead us in prayer? Okay. All right, everybody bow your heads. Fold your hands and repeat after me. Dear God, God, thank you for lilies lilies and other flowers and and springtime and and Jesus Jesus and and life and all that joy. And all that joy. Amen. Amen. All right, you can go back to your seats. Can you thank Emma for helping us out today? Thank you. All right, let's see if I can do this all at once. I know, I know. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> you know it's kind of sad when people clap when you can stand up without falling down. <laughs> well, we have a couple of announcements before we get to our scripture today. Uh, mostly, uh, I don't know if you all were uh, able to, some of you were here on Friday and some of you watched online. Our youth group uh, led a beautiful Good Friday service on Friday and I'm really proud of them. And so uh, the next few slides are actually to support our youth group. And a uh, few of them are headed to a, uh, on a mission trip to Florida in uh, July. And so uh, if you want to help with those fundraising, uh, all you have to do is eat pizza on April 25th from a specific <laughs> pizza hut uh, here in West Fargo. Pro, part of those proceeds will go towards the youth and their, their mission trip. And then uh, the next one is our talent show, which is because of a blizzard, no surprise there, has been moved to May. Hopefully we won't have a blizzard on May 5th. Everybody just kind of say a prayer um, on that. Friday, May 5th, we're going to have a talent show, have a lot of fun. There will be uh, food to eat, and uh, that's also a fundraiser for those youth. And then our third one, we got them all planned all in a row. This is mostly for you young folk um, because I don't want anyone to hurt themselves who might hurt themselves on that Sky Zone. May 16th, Tuesday, anybody who goes to Sky Zone on May 16th, parts of those proceeds go towards a, our uh, youth mission trip. So we're really excited about those and those ways that you can support the youth going forward. Otherwise, this is kind of a youth-focused um, announce, set of announcements. We are uh, the next three, let's see here. We have confirmation Wednesday, confirmation Sunday, and then the Sunday after we have confirmation. So we are going to have uh, some uh, youth joining the church and taking their vows over the next couple of weeks, and we want to celebrate them. Obviously, uh, are part of our crew helping out this morning are some of our confirmation students and we're excited for the ways that they are, are learning what it means to be a part of the church and to connect. So uh, encourage them and pray for them as we go forward. All right, so for the last six weeks here at Flame of Faith, um, last six weeks is, is a time we call Lent getting up towards Easter. We've been talking about the stories of Christ that speak to our vulnerabilities, our doubts, our fears, and even more. We've spoken about how the realities of illness and healing, of hurt and forgiveness, of anxiety and peace, of life and death, 
belonging and loneliness, fear and duty, all of these hard realities, they make us feel unsteady in life and sometimes even unsteady in our faith. Now, we don't share these stories because it's fun to focus on the hard stuff. In fact, today's uh, kind of story is a lot more fun. But instead, we tell these stories because reality demands honesty. In truth, there's a lot about scripture that makes us uncomfortable. Maybe because if we're honest, it's opposed to how we think, or maybe it opens questions that we aren't ready to answer, or maybe it challenges us in new ways. Or, and this fits with today's story, it just sounds kind of unbelievable. The dead resurrected, boulders moved on their own, the ground shaking, guards falling, uh, falling down afraid. It sounds more like a bedtime story than a history to base a life on. But it is the story we tell and the story we believe, more importantly. And no, we don't have any secret evidence that proves much in the way of science and math, but in telling of the story and the changing of our lives, we are living proof to the world that this story is true in ways far deeper than history can say. Our scripture this morning picks up where we left off earlier in the morning of the first day of the week. After the Sabbath, As the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. And his appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. And Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Here ends our reading. Now, I love a good spectacle. This story would be fun to act out. We'd have um, some women hanging out, maybe over here, we'll say there's a group of women over here, they've got burial supplies at the ready, and they, they'd be walking in and taking kind of a long journey, and then suddenly the wall would burst open like Mr. Kool-Aid style, just like, <laughs> there it is. And then someone would just be like hanging out up there, shining brightly like lightning. And I I thought about how to make that happen. Like, I know some of you would have been willing to hide up there the whole service, but you would have had to sit there the whole service and then afterward, because we're not just getting out the ladder. So, be a little much. So, you're going to have to imagine the wall's broken in and somebody's hanging out up there. And the women are just freaked out. They're gasping. They're afraid. They are no idea what's happening. And And then, you know, they slow the angels up there. He's talking to them, telling them what to do. And then the women are slowly getting their bearings. They're figuring out what what the angel is telling them and what to do. And they start to leave. And you think, okay, the scene is over. They're turning to leave. And that's actually where Mark, the Gospel of Mark, ends the story. But then Jesus shows up comes in through the back, and he's glowing because post-resurrection Jesus always has to glow, at least in art. And then he tells, they, they lay down at his feet and they worship him. And then he tells them the same thing the, that the angel had, go and tell the disciples. And so Mary Magdalene, she goes and she tells everybody the story. That's it, end of the story. Anybody got their deviled eggs ready? Yeah, no? It's more than that, of course. These women at the tomb in the morning, they tell the story in a way 
that changes how we understand changes how we understand everything that came before. Mary Magdalene named in each and every resurrection story, and then there's the other Mary, or the other Marys, or the women. Each of the Gospels tells it a little differently. But each Gospel mentions Mary of Magdala. They come to the garden with spices and oil. They're cleaning up and preparing Jesus' body for the real burial. You see, on Friday, they got him off the cross as quickly as possible and put him in the tomb before sundown so that they could honor Sabbath. They spent Saturday waiting, unable to do anything. And any of you who know grief know that you just want stuff to do. You want to be able to figure things out, clean stuff out, make a plan, do what you're supposed to do. But they had to wait. And Sabbath is a time you're supposed to focus on God and most likely all they could do is say, God, why? God, I don't understand. Itching to get to the tomb and to his body, afraid of what they might find when they get there. So they get up in the dark as the sun rises and they walk toward the garden with the tomb. And then the ground begins to shake They are literally shaken in this moment, and they already have so much to be terrified about, but then the tomb is opened with a glowing angel of the Lord, and there appears to be lightning, and the guards, who have been irrelevant until this point, are collapsed on the ground in fear. They faint. The women, made of sterner stuff, at least wait to hear the angel before they, you know, run away. They're afraid. The text tells us that not only did the angel tell them not to be afraid, but that they, they ran with fear. Joy also, but fear. These women, they didn't quite know what this all would mean but they understood that Jesus was doing something incredible, something new. They didn't know the details, but they knew that something had changed. And they're given a message by the angel and they turn to tell the disciples, and this is an incredible moment in the story. They haven't even seen Jesus yet, and yet they believe enough to go tell the story. This moment, the women here are in this moment in the morning, they're a lot like us. We don't get the privilege of hanging out with the literal resurrected Christ around us. We have faith through hearing the story. We are a lot like these women in this moment. Aware of the resurrection, uncertain sometimes, unsettled, And yet, we know that there is something here. There is something important in this story. You see, these ladies, they could have just taken this as more bad news. Their week had been terrible. And yet, all of this bad news up to this point, and they can't even do what they're coming to do, and yet they have this notion that something new is happening. McGray de Vega, the author of our Lenten study that we've been reading and following called Embracing the Uncertain, he says that something new is happening, and he gives us this advice. If you doubt the resurrection, then start practicing resurrection living, a life that counts on the resurrection until you can believe the resurrection itself. That is exactly what the angel told the women. He said, go to Galilee. You may still have your doubts and may still be afraid, and who can blame you? But God is calling you to do something about it. Get active in your faith. Go meet this resurrected Jesus. It is not until they turn back to go into the world that they meet Christ. And when they do, when they meet Jesus and he says, greetings, welcome, Or as one Greek commentator shares, rejoice. In fact, he shares that instead of Jesus having met them and said greetings, instead he confronts them and says rejoice. 
This commentator, Reverend Rob Mayalis, he says he is meeting the women at the crossroads of fear and joy, and he commands them to rejoice. And what do they do? They fall down and worship. During our Wednesday worship this week, we spoke about the discomfort of faith, the ways that God uh, connects with us in the uncomfortable, and the ways that when we encounter God, we are often uncomfortable. This is one of those moments. In 10 short verses of scripture, fear is mentioned four times. But that mixture of fear and joy that the women are feeling, I think that's an incredible connection to the way this day makes us feel. Easter morning is a celebration of the greatest news in all of Christianity. And then sometimes it feels like Like we just can't quite believe the good news only because the bad news seems so strong in our lives. What happens when we let all the hard stuff, the real, the day-to-day, the hard stuff of life, what happens when we let it overwhelm our ability to even notice the good? De Vega, he continues, he says, we can get so easily caught up with more bad news than we can handle that we might not even know what good news looks like, even if we witness it firsthand. The reality is God is resurrecting dead things to life all the time, all around us, yet we are so locked in our fears and anxieties that we miss it. On one level, many of us are even fighting our, 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 the very brains in our heads. Dementia and memory loss, depression and anxiety, all the ways our brains twist our thoughts and feelings on a medical level. So too, the way our souls can get caught up in the difficult times and we lose track of the good. The snow getting so deep, we can't even imagine finding the seeds beneath the earth. So when we are faced with an impossible story and asked to celebrate it, it can feel hard. How can we celebrate when doubt clouds our vision? How can we celebrate when fear swamps our control? How can we celebrate when we, like the women at the tomb, can't even grieve in peace? We do so by remembering the good news that this moment changes lives. The unsteadiness of the empty tomb is not one of despair, but is an unsteadiness of excitement and hope. We can have faith, not because we got to see the resurrected Christ, but instead because these women didn't give in to their fear. They told the story. First to their uh, colleagues, the male disciples who didn't believe them, of course, but then they kept telling the rest of the world. We believe because the story continues to change lives. First 2,000 years and then some. For those of you in this room, some of you know the difference of you can pinpoint in your lives the way that faith has changed you or your family. Some of you know the difference it makes in your life when a family member learns to live into the true faith of Christ and to deal with their addiction. Some of you know the difference it makes in a community trying to survive trauma or a family struggling with grief or a life of chronic pain, our faith changes us internally, which changes us externally. And so when the resurrection, with it comes the hope of of life changed, and with life changed comes the hope of communities changed, and hope, that hope it takes work. But there's this spark in the garden. It inspires these disciples to not hide behind their fear, but to live and grow and boldly change the world. That same spark, it's in each of us. It doesn't require blind faith or a life without doubt or hardship. Instead, it is the spark that creates courage in us. Courage to do as Christ called us to do. Falling at the feet of Christ in worship is not a matter of sitting here and singing together, although that is glorious and I want Easter morning worship every week. But the heart-changing part that connects us to the world beyond, that's the part of the resurrection. 
Now, early in his ministry, Jesus tells us, he, go, he goes and he preaches one of his first sermons he, he reads from Isaiah. He says uh, that the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor and has sent me to proclaim the release of the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and to let the oppressed go free and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. A life of following the resurrected Christ is not a life settled on the floor in worship, but a life of getting up and going and creating hope in the world. When you don't see any, change it yourself. Shovel someone's sidewalk or pick at the ice to help the snow melt. Tell someone wonderful things about them. Send a note, send flowers, call someone on the phone, not just text. Take someone out to lunch. Bring comfort to those who are lonely. You could bring food to the hungry. Volunteer with Meals on Wheels or take, or at the food bank. Pay off lunch debt at the local school. Take someone out to lunch. Make a casserole for a friend. Bring snacks for our school food drive, although that actually ends today. So, <laughs> but feed the hungry. Or we can set the captives free. Volunteer with the jail chaplains. Connect with a stranger at a recovery meeting. Tell your story and help another be set free. Pay off somebody's medical debt. Learn about someone different than you. Differences that are, go beyond so many things. Whether it's age or gender or politics or race or religion or accent or nationality or brain chemistry or, or sexuality or even just they have different interests than you. When we learn and grow, we can seek to set the oppressed free. The life of hope found in the resurrection is and always be the life of hope we see every single day. Christ is risen and we are called into that resurrection to live a life worthy of that resurrection, to change and grow as followers of Christ together. We can follow the footsteps of those incredible women on the first Easter Sunday. And with joy and maybe a bit of fear, we too can change the world. And while Easter is both the soul-filling and wonderful moment at the beginning of our day, it can also bring a bit of unsteadiness. If this we truly believe, we cannot stay unchanged. We become unsteady in hope in the future. We become unsteady in the truth of our brokenness. We become unsteady in the vision of the resurrection, and yet it is a beautiful uncertainty. It is the excitement of something new. It is the wonder of new life. It is the birds singing outside my door this morning, reminding me that I don't have to hide in winter anymore. With the confidence of the children of God, we stand together and proclaim the good news. And I'm going to ask you to stand for this because Christ is risen. Get, stand up. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Will you sing with me? And by me, I mean Jansen. Christ is alive. Right. 
Christ is alive and comes to bring good news to this and every age till earth and all creation ring with joy, with justice, love and praise. And so hear the benediction. Christ is alive, and that is better than any other story I could tell today. Let us go into the world as Christ's people changed and bring hope to others as well. Let us go in Christ's peace this day and always. Amen. Amen.